This is a video for how to go about creating a fully dimension drawing for item number seven from your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360. I want to again note that as we've gone through and created dimension drawings, you'll see them right next to the parts if you keep the names the same. So we're going to double click on number seven and we're going to go to design, drawing from design, and we're going to stick with our PLTW title block and we will say OK. Now we want to go ahead and place our front view of the object and we are going to change this to a 1 to 3 scale. I'm going to click to place the front view. I'll say OK. We're going to go to projected view and then click and create our top, side, and isometric views. We're going to say OK. And instead of double clicking on the blue line, you can also always right click and go to edit view. Sometimes it'll take a second for that to come up, so instead you can just double click. It seems to come up faster when I double click on the blue line. Go to shaded, go to close. Now we're going to go ahead and start dimensioning our width dimensions. Now it, this is a symmetrical object. It's the same on the left as it is on the right, so we could talk about only dimensioning one side of the object, but for the sake of this part, we're going to go ahead and dimension in the front view the full width of the object. So we'll go ahead, and this is the line that's the full width. I'll go ahead and drag up and place that dimension. Um, we're going to go ahead and go from here to here for our, our next dimension. Let's go ahead and make sure we click on our snaps. I'm going to snap up, and I'm going to go from here to here drag up one snap and place that dimension. I'm going to right click and say OK. I chose to not do this dimension mainly to say because if it is a symmetrical object just saying that we could theoretically speaking go in and say you know from this side to this let me see here I gotta to go to cancel if go from side to side so I theoretically could say you know from this side to this side is a center line and that would just go right on top of that object I really don't want to do that so I'm just gonna say undo take away that center line and we'll just come up here in our top view and place ourselves a dimension from here to here now in previous videos I've told you I'm just trying to make sure the communication is clear we could have come here in the front view and just said you know from this point to this point um, just drag straight up and place that as five. We can place that, but just in my opinion, it makes it easier to see and understand when I just place that up there in the top view, showing it going right down through the middle. Remember, if it's a horizontal line in my front view, it's got to be a horizontal line in my top view, so these will line up. If it makes it any easier, you know, you can drag these a little bit closer together by dragging them down. So if you choose to, we have maintained adjacency here, if you choose to, you can keep those closer together. We only have one dimen depth dimension to do, and that's really just this one horizontal line. You can pick whichever view you want to do that in. For the sake of discussion, I'm just going to do mine in the top view. And now we have some height dimensions to do and the height dimensions in this respect can get a little bit tricky because we really don't have a choice but to disobey a few rules that we've learned in previous videos. We can't dimension to hidden lines. Um, so in our side view we really can't do you know the height of that back um, you know the the height of the incline line from the back object and then from the front of the object as well. So in this case what we're going to do is we are going to say from the top to the bottom here. We're going to drag that out and we're going to have to go ahead and disobey some rules. We're going to have to drag extension lines through the object because we don't have any other choice. We generally don't dimension to hidden lines because that shows a surface or an edge not visible in the given view. So we're not really dimensioning to anything. It's almost like being on the other side of a wall and talking about what's on the other side of the wall. So in this case we're going to go from point down to point and we're going to drag over and we're going to place that dimension. Now we just disobeyed a rule because we otherwise could not have avoided, uh, avoided it. Now you could make an argument that you know we could just dimension to the hidden lines in the side view. We try to stick within the rule sheet that we've been given and we don't dimension to hidden lines. So this right here you'll notice that the majority of the dimensions are on the front view. Again with that five I could have placed that on the front view but that might have put a little bit too much on this view. There's a lot going on in this front view. Um, but it does communicate everything adequately. And again, given the ISO, you should be able to tell that these lines don't indicate any object line or any part of the object. So let's go to save. And we're going to say save. And have everything named the same. And again, you'll see it show up right over here as it updates to the cloud. 
Sometimes you'll see things spin a little bit longer because remember you're not going directly to a hard drive of a computer. So we do have ourselves a fully dimensioned object here. So this has been a video for how to go about fully dimensioning item number 7 for your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360.